What is REST API? If you are thinking REST API has something to do with relaxing, chilling, and having fun, then you are absolutely correct. Because that's what developers do when their web applications are supported with the superpower REST API. Well, chokes apart, a REST API, also known as RESTful API, is an application programming interface, API or web API, that conforms to the constraints of REST architectural style and allows for interaction with RESTful web services via HTTP protocol. Where REST stands for representational state transfer and the client server architecture that implements it is called RESTful Web Service. This concept was first defined in 2000 by computer scientist Dr. Roy Fielding in his doctoral dissertation and since then REST APIs have been commonly used for connecting components and applications in a microservices architecture. And why is that so? It's because REST APIs are standardized. That is, they follow a uniform interface. They are lightweight, fast, scalable, cacheable, and stateless. That is, REST APIs do not require any server-side sessions. Server applications aren't allowed to store any data related to a client request. Now that we know how unique REST API is, we still know nothing about how it works or what exactly it is. You heard it right. The big question is what exactly is a representational state transfer, that is REST. To comprehend this, we first need to understand client-server architecture. A basic client-server architecture involves client, server, request, response, and a resource. A resource can be a document, image, temporal service, a collection of other resources, a non-virtual object, that is a person, and so on. The state of the resource at any particular timestamp is known as resource representation that consists of data, metadata, describing the data, and hypermedia links which can help the client in transition to the next desired state. By the definition of API, we know that the server only communicates a particular amount of data and information to the client and doesn't allow complete access to the database or resource per se. It is these resource representations that are transferred from server to client and any change in state is communicated. Hence, we call it representational state transfer. But how does this work? We already know that REST APIs communicate via HTTP requests to perform standard database functions. These functions include create, read, update, and delete records also known as CRUD, within a resource. For example, a REST API would use a GET request to retrieve a record, a POST request to create one, a PUT request to update a record, and a DELETE request to delete one. All HTTP methods can be used in API calls. A well-designed REST API is similar to a website running in a web browser with built-in HTTP functionality. The request in REST API contains the operation, either of the CRUD operations, endpoint, parameter or body, and headers that include important identifier information, such as metadata, authorizations, uniform resource identifiers, URIs, caching, cookies, and more. Based on the request, response is sent from server and the desired operation is performed. This response includes relevant representational state of the resource and is delivered to a client virtually in any format. For example, JavaScript object notation, JSON, HTML, XLT, Python, PHP, or plain text. JSON is popular because it's readable by both humans and machines, and it is programming language agnostic. In order to have a fruitful communication, Request headers and response headers, along with conventional HTTP status codes, are used within well-designed REST APIs. Let's understand this with an online shopping portal. 
let's assume that you work for an online shopping website for shoes, say shoe shop. You might want to know the number of stocks available for shoes on their website. How will you do this? Well, you will use REST API to communicate over the cloud server. Generate a request which includes the operation GET and point as HTTP slash shoe shop slash API slash stocks. That indicates we need to access stock and header is the API key or any ID. Request will be sent and the present status of stock will be sent in the response. If new stock has come for existing shoes in the warehouse and you want to update the data, you would send the operation put endpoint as http slash shoe shop slash api slash stock header id and the parameter that is the new stock. The stock would be updated on the resource similarly for post and delete. This is how a REST API works. But we must know, though REST and HTTP look alike, they aren't the same.